Reject Nation. We are at AMC. We're talking to our phones right now because it's so echoey here that this will help the audio. Um, we just got done watching No Time to Die. And this is first reactions. <laughs> I'm having a, a bit of difficulty uh, processing some stuff that happens in this movie. I heard there were going to be surprises. <laughs> and I heard uh, like a, nu a number of things I heard. I won't, obviously no spoilers. There wasn't anything about the ending, but a lot of people were saying the ending is divisive. And I was like, what the hell could a Bond movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be that device. I haven't seen in a different Bond movie before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, we watched the ending and John and I both looked at each other the last act like, <laughs> Oh my god. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> They're really doing this. Yeah, yeah. So that's all we'll say because yeah. we don't want to make the focus of that, even though when this movie's done, that will be all you're thinking about. Yes. Most likely. <laughs> it will overshadow right? the experience. Just leave it at that. Here's my basic thoughts on how I felt about the movie. I thought the first, I want to say like hour, hour 20, very strong, very different, very engaging. And the last half, I. It wasn't gripping me as much in the last half. I'm not going to say there's not things in it that I didn't like. Okay, here's the basic summary. First half, wow, this is really engaging. This is really good. Second half, it's kind of like becoming like a by the numbers Bond movie all of a sudden. <laughs> this is, is this Daniel Craig's last Bond movie? And then like the last act has moments of, holy crap, what, what, the what hell? is happening <laughs> yeah. right now? Yeah, it's the basic summation, right? I feel like we're kind of on the same page. We don't talk yeah. during the movie. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we're on the same page about this. Generally, movie. yeah, I would agree. It's like it starts out in a pretty exciting manner where, yeah, you know, you can kind of get the sense for what Carrie Fukunaga is bringing to the table with this movie. And there is a lot of really punchy action. There is a lot of, you know, gripping context. There's a big convoluted plot and whatnot. And then, yeah, once it finally gets to being a Bond movie and really settles into its whole big villain thing, which kind of happens later on in the movie than you might expect. Then, yeah, it starts to feel like, okay, we're doing a lot of the Bond classic tropes, which some of which work because, you know, every time you get a new eccentric villain and a new eccentric layer, there's fun to be had there. But yeah, it does kind of level out into, okay, I kind of know what to expect until the end, you know, comes up. And then that's when the surprises kick back in. I mean, I'll say that I, I, f I feel like the action sequences here are probably stronger. There's a variety of action scenes here. Mm -hmm. And I felt like Kira Fukunaga wanted to definitely capture like different, like really take advantage of the specific types of stages and sequences and the stunt performers. And I think it's probably the best action out of any of the specific Daniel Craig movies. So probably any Bond movie, because honestly, <laughs> I feel like Daniel Craig is the best action. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably the best action I've seen in any Bond movie. I'd like to revisit Casino Royale before officially declaring that and i would say too that in terms of like an acting performance daniel craig he's just as committed and, and as good here as he as he was in casino royale yeah he's great in this the film's gonna challenge you on some things in terms of the bond character we're not the biggest bond enthusiasts we've yeah. seen a lot of james bond movies we haven't seen every james bond movie there are things here that take place where you're like Ooh, that's going to piss off some Vaughn's yes. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a few plot choices. And also character there are certain choices flat out. elements yeah. in Bond, yeah. the character, that are, I've heard people calling this the sensitive Bond. Which it's a dour Bond. <laughs> it is, it's a dour. It's more dour than I was expecting based off of that assessment yeah. of sensitive Bond. But there is, yeah, also a more sensitive layer to the character that I am curious to see how people respond to. Because to me, again, it's a movie that seems for this franchise that is sort of built upon not making too many bold choices specifically about the character yeah. this movie does try to do that that's why i was thinking that the last half had this weird mix of you're doing the the new challenging things that not every bond fan is going to get on board for. yeah but like, trying to deliver it in a very bond-esque package i didn't think i'd ever be compelled to talk spoilers about a bond know, movie before right? but this movie does things to challenge the audience on it that i feel there is an argument to be made for why it is appropriate specifically for the daniel craig franchise for the choices they decide to go down here mm -hmm. because i've always thought casino royale was a bit of this weird wiggle room for the fact that it was like it's a bond origin movie it's a prequel yet it takes place in modern day it doesn't go back to the 60s to like you know like do the prequel before all the other bonds yeah. you know something like that so i felt like they have more liberty to get more emotional and serialized and and shit like that that being said though there are things that i can totally see you know how they talked about like luke skywalker last Jedi when he takes the watch from q and throws it over his <laughs> yeah, shoulder yeah. <laughs> i don't need these gadgets q and i also thought that they fleshed out the characters 
pretty much all around. They made everyone much more human in ways that kind of surprised me. Yeah. Like the return of Ben Wishaw as Q, he was great. But really the standouts I, I thought were surprisingly because I thought Spectre was boring as hell, and I couldn't remember jack about yep. the Madeline character. Yes. On, on, only, like, necessary details to follow this movie. And she was great. What was her name? Leah, Leah Seydoux. Seydoux. Yeah. She's fantastic here. Mm -hmm. she's, she's fantastic. Yeah, I cared a lot about her. I thought she was wonderful. I did, too. Uh, I, I thought also Lashana Lynch had a lot of presence. Ana de Armas. They show her in the trailer. I'm going to tamper some expectations here. <laughs> she's not in the movie a lot, but when she's there... It's she, a delight. Yeah, she's, I was, she brings something refreshing yeah to it and reinv reinvigorating some of that bond fun that you and a different kind of fun too yeah, yeah. It, there's a certain sense of ensemble that this movie hits that i thought was quite fun and satisfying yeah i liked all the new players as well as the returning players like everybody got some moments to shine and i really liked them all as a unit both when they were at odds and when they were finally all working together you know even freaking ray fines was great and they, you see jeffrey wright the watcher return <laughs> <And> <laughs> it's weird to see naomi harris in a movie last week and this year here finish what if this week and see jeffrey, jeffrey wright, wright. Yeah. Yeah. and jeffrey wright this is my my favorite Felix <laughs> that yeah. we've gotten from him. Felix is really, I mean, it, that in Casino Royale. Like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to top him in Casino Royale. <laughs> Rami Malik. I was actually surprised. We didn't talk much about the movie when it was done, but when he first showed up, I was like, oh, damn, that Rami Malik, he's bringing a lot. He's bringing, he has a presence. And then as it progressed, I was like, man, this guy is kind of dull. <laughs> this guy's kind yeah. of boring. And I felt like they, they felt like they needed to write some super villain in. <laughs> yeah. That it was not really that engaging, even though I felt like Rami Malek was really trying to bring the heft. He's doing everything that you would want a Bond villain performer to be doing. And he's got, you know, a lot of the eccentricities. But yeah, when it comes right down to just the execution of it, I almost felt like that was an area where maybe they should have gone a little bit more unique, made a choice that isn't. He's very subdued in his performance style for this particular character. And for whatever reason, I kind of got only about what I expected from the villain from Rami Malek, which is a bummer because I think generally he's a terrific actor, but this didn't show me anything like special or like he was taking the gloves off and having fun portraying the Bond villain so much. Not yeah. necessarily that he has to be having fun, but uh, that was an element that left me wanting something more satisfying rather than like scratching my head and wondering mm -hmm. how I might feel as some of the other elements did. I would still say though, overall, I don't know if I'd, I mean, Casino Royale's like top tier i can't i can't nothing beats that for me to be honest the question I, is does it beat skyfall <laughs> yeah that's the question does it beat skyfall i think it takes more bold choices it's more daring and there's things about this that even if i only watch this movie once i'm gonna remember forever yes exactly yeah and i think for me that would be the one thing that pushes it over i know it's gonna piss off some yeah. when I watch this movie. that'd be the one thing that pushes this over skyfall for me was like for sure i'm gonna remember shit <laughs> even yeah. if i only watch this one time there's good there's things that they do here in terms of action visually real even with the sound design obviously it's a bomb movie so there's gonna be a lot of explosions yeah. And one thing that I love is a very unique choice that I thought was kind of a, a a replay here. If there was like a really loud explosion that caused like that ear ring, and, and oh, the way yeah. they handled the um, the way the audit the, uh, the muffling the, of the, the sound, muffling of the audit, yeah, as that it carries slowly over. comes back in. They yeah. use sound design to make it more immersive. There are some action scenes here that I just thought were brilliant. Oh yeah, the Bond music was also really good in this movie. It's from Hans Zimmer. And so there was a lot of action scenes where it sounds exactly like The Dark Knight, which is funny because Skyfall seemed to ape a lot from The Dark Knight, and then this one makes you think of Dark Knight because of the music, but then it has like that Bond flavor to it too. It's really good. It's really good. I like The Dark Knight. I'd say I like this movie. I, I probably like it. Uh, I like a lot about it, but there are definitely times where I was like, I feel like I should be feeling something, but I'm really not feeling anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that kind of went on for like a while. Yeah, yeah. I'm really curious as to how I'm going to feel about this in like a few days' time because I, I agree. It's like there are certain choices it makes that personally, usually me as a viewer, I'm like, cool, try something different, take a swing, do something bold, and maybe if it doesn't work for everyone, it'll at least breathe some new life into this series. And I think yeah they do successfully do that to some degree and then you know the rest is about uh kind of how the more standard parts uh complement all that and yeah like coming out of the theater i think i may have been a bit more enthused off the bat over skyfall but i think there are aspects of this that might be a bit more admirable <laughs> in think, terms of skyfall sets out to like excite you yeah. this movie doesn't this movie isn't trying to this, it's this like this movie it's... has exciting action but the rest of the movie is not exciting it's not trying to be <laughs> no. as slick as all those other yeah. movies are like that's no. and that's another aspect i'm curious to know 
note because you it's know not like fun when there's not action. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, for but... sure because there is a certain element of energy and rhythm coming out of especially the direction. But yeah, it's not like a f- movie that stops to have fun yeah. except for in character scenes where there's like dialogue humor. Yeah. And yeah, it's not doing like too much hyper elegant flashy like yeah. camera work and stuff like that. And as you see in the trailer, it's a love story. Just like Venom. Take with that what you would like Venom with the Recarnage. <laughs> but yeah, that's our thoughts. Family Man Bond. I, I'd give it a recommendation, and I'm just so fascinated to know what people have to say because. Yeah. Uh, See it for yourself. Yeah, that, wow, that, that final act. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. We'll see you guys soon.